Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back. We are out here in the garage replacing the belt on the Suron. Now I have about 1800 miles on this bike and uh, under super hard acceleration at higher speeds, you hear like this like consistent tick noise. It doesn't speed up, it doesn't slow down, it just randomly comes into play and starts, you know, consistently ticking. And after a couple days of research, I found out that these OEM belts, after a while, can start to make some funny noise. And even a couple people on some Suron forums said, uh, it's just belt ticks. So, I went ahead and ordered a Gates belt a couple days ago, and it showed up today. Got this bad boy on Amazon from Grit Shift. Came with a little key tag and sticker. Gates Power Grip GT4. I'll drop a link for this belt down in the description if you guys would like to pick it up for yours as well. Got the Suron up on a lift, up on a milk crate, and uh, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and start tearing this thing apart. So there's probably like a hundred different ways to do this. As you can see, the back tire is off the ground right now. To make this easier to line up when we're putting everything back together, I would rather the tire be on the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the shock. And to remove the shock, it's literally just this top mounting bolt. This middle bolt here and this top bolt here and this whole linkage in the shock can come out. And the tools you'll need to remove this shock are a six millimeter Allen wrench, a 13 millimeter socket with an extension and a ratchet. around till you find your master link. Pop your little safety clip off there. I also recommend while you have the chain off, go ahead and clean it. This chain has 1800 miles on it and it's been waxed regularly, but I haven't pulled it off and done like a deep clean on it, which it doesn't look terrible, but definitely could use a good cleaning. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this rear caliper, with a five millimeter Allen wrench. And then get yourself a three millimeter Allen and there's a little bolt here holding down the brake line. Then we'll go ahead and take the caliper off. Just go ahead and set it above the seat, get it out of the way. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this plastic cover. And we got a bolt down here and a bolt up here. And they are four millimeter Allens. All right, now that that shield's out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up this motor so we can get this belt off. And uh, it's one Allen bolt here and one Allen bolt right here. And it's the same on the other side and these are six millimeter Allens. Key tip, always before you start putting weight down on these things, make sure the Allen wrench is all the way seated in the bolt. Otherwise you will strip it out and make sure it's the right size. If it is not the right size, it will strip it out as well. That's why I'm trying to tell you guys the sizes of these before we start each process. All right, so now that the motor's all loose, the best way I have found to do this, get yourself kind of a long pry bar. And what really makes this easier is I have one of the support beams in between my pegs, so I can just leverage off that. But if you don't have that, you can always rest it right here on your kickstand. So all I'm doing is going under one of the fins and just really lightly pushing up. Don't be pushing super hard on these fins because these little fins are really delicate and the motor should move with ease. So if the motor's not moving, loosen it up more. But now that we got the motor pushed up, this belt should slide off. Just like that. So this swing arm nut is uh, definitely a different one. It does require a special tool to take off. Unfortunately, I do not have that tool, which it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver and a hammer to get it off because once I get it off, that guy is not going back on. I went up to Ace and got the right size nut for it. So let's go ahead and try to get this thing off here. Yeah, well, that wasn't very tight. Well, there it is, guys. You seen how easy that was to get off. You can actually replace this guy with a M10 by one, I do believe it is. Also, if this swing arm shaft freezes up on you, it's cut out for an Allen wrench over here. So, so put you an Allen wrench in there and just kind of turn it a little bit as you push it and it should come right out. And once you get enough over here, you can just grab it and pull it out. Okay, so I did notice taking a pry bar and just kind of putting it in between the frame and swing arm here and just kind of prying out a little bit. It really does help get it out of that little seated position that it's in. There we go. So it, it's a super, super tight fit in there. All right, so here's the belt. And uh, with the naked eye, the belt doesn't look terrible. But if you take the belt and you do one of these numbers, 
Look at that. Look at that one. That one's real bad. They're pretty much all like that. Also, a good idea while you guys have this jack shaft out is to check all of the seals and the bearings to make sure everything's A-OK -okay before you put it back in. Uh, they're both super cheap to replace and if yours is bad while you have it out, I would go ahead and replace it. I'm gonna take each one of these bolts out individually and put Loctite on them and then put them back on and torque them down. So that way I never have to worry in the back of my mind that these are gonna come out. Whenever I get this thing all cleaned up and uh, ready to go back in, I'll get back with you guys. All right, so I'm gonna tell you guys this because it may help you out if you're doing the same. The bolts, the OEM bolts that come in this jack shaft from the factory are absolutely garbage. They're basically just a really bad quality bolt and they're supposed to be a five millimeter, but the five millimeter is like super duper sloppy in there. On the other side, the sprocket side, every one of them stripped out and I literally could not use the Allen wrench to get them out. So what I've been using instead is a T30 Torx bit on a 3 h ratchet and let me tell you, it makes this process so much easier. As you can see, it grabs up in there good. Ugh. I highly recommend replacing these uh, stock bolts. Just go to your local hardware store and uh, get you something a little bit better quality. Here's another reason to upgrade to like a higher quality bolt. If you take your Allen wrench now and put it in there, as you can see, there's no slop whatsoever. It's just a way better cut, way better quality bolt, and you won't have to worry about stripping them out. Also, I noticed on a couple of the OEM bolts, I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but up here toward the head where the threads are, it's stretched, which means this bolt was over torqued a little bit, and if you were to put this back in and torque it down again, it will uh, probably snap off. So, you got another good reason to replace them. All right. Got the jack shaft all cleaned up and got the bolts replaced in both sides, sprocket side and belt side. Now before you reassemble all this, uh, there's like a, a metal sleeve in this jack shaft. Make sure that's all lined up and the swing arm bolt goes through it freely before you start putting all this together. Because if it's like out of whack or too far down or something, this won't slide through and it'll be a big pain. Pop our little spacer in there. Make sure you have these spacers on the right sides because they are different lengths. Go ahead and slide everything together. I can't get this side in real quick. A little press and pry, a little press and pry, a little press and pry. There she goes. Bada boom, bada bing. Now to uh, get this belt on, just like we got it off, take your pry tool and pry the motor up just a little bit. Just enough to slide her on there. Belt is on and we will leave all this loose. Let's go ahead and get everything else put back together. And uh, this old swing arm nut goes bye bye. Go up to Ace Hardware or your local hardware store. Get a M10 by one nylon lock nut. That way you don't have to worry about that special tool every time. This is just a 17 millimeter. That's all she wrote, folks. Got the sprocket clean, got the chain clean. We're gonna go ahead and start reinstalling everything. Alright guys, so when setting the tension on this belt, I'm gonna go ahead and use my same pry bar, go back here on the motor on the fins. Instead of prying up on it uh, to make the belt loose, we're gonna go below the bar and we're gonna pry down on it. You guys see that tension? Yeah, that's way too loose. Pry down, pry down. I think that right there is pretty good. Once you get your belt to the right tightness, Fold this tensioner up. Uh, a lot of people are doing it by hand. For some reason, mine's super tight, so I'd use a pry bar, but push it up till it touches. There's a little a set pin inside. Once it touches that, it kinda, kinda locks the belt in where you need it. And then you can kinda tighten everything down. So this makes it pretty nice uh, and pretty easy to make sure the motor is even on both sides. If you got a set of calipers, go ahead and figure out what the distance is from the very top of the nut to basically from here to the top of the nut. Lock that down and then make sure it's the same on the other side. If not, make your adjustments and then tighten down as needed. And that is how you change the belt on the Suron. It is a little bit of a job, but uh, once you kind of get things down, it flows pretty well. Don't forget to wax your chain after you clean it and uh, also go ahead and bleed your brakes while you're at it. If you don't know how to bleed your brakes, I did do a video on that. I will drop it right up here. 
If you guys are interested to go check that out and you want to learn how to bleed your brakes, you can do that. But other than that, she's all done. Uh, if you guys learned anything from this video, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. I upload new content every Sunday and Thursday, and I hope to see you guys there. Till next time, peace out. Bye, have a great time.